Welcome Traveller, I'm Free to Play and I'm your guide for a successful Free to Play adventure on Astera. Today we beat the Elite Tower Wolf and break down about 8 million HP in only 3 times with a fire team, shall we? Disclaimer, I have used two Gacha A force in this fight and I can't say for sure that it would be possible without them, especially Xenia's A4, when using an elemental team only. This beast has less physical defense than elemental defense, so next time I will go for a sword team with a fire or dagger backup in the end for the final shot. But what's that supposed to mean? The wolf has four different weakness shifts every 20% of damage done to it, and it loses sword after the 40% health mark. But fire stays the whole fight, so doing as much damage as possible in the first two attempts, especially before hitting the 40% mark and then finish it off with a different compilation is key to winning here, if you don't use a fire team. You don't have to win now, take your time and build up a strategy. You have lots of tries to figure out what works best. Just give up on the battle if you see a flaw, learn from it and do it better. Mastering the tower in unlimited attempts before new year is a good idea because of the 1000 golden guide stones, so maybe just beat it and try to be faster next week. But what are these yin yang accessories? I'll talk about it when we talked about the fight first, the wolf's attacks and how to solve different situations. Let's dive in. So the move you have to be really careful in this phase of the battle is Shed Armor. It reduces the physical defense of that unit and if not healed instantly with elevating elixir from Primrose EX or from Serenoa's Panica Palette for example, then this unit won't survive as long as you progress through the different phases. So the first thing I want to do is to go for the shower of roses with primrose so that i have the hp region and being faster and renew is going for the crusaders prayer for almost the entire battle there is a specific situation where i'm shifting but i'm coming to that later elemental rune and later the melting fire are reducing the elemental attack and the physical attack of this enemy and sarisa is going for the espionage to cap that and she will always come to the front again to extend that cap for the whole course of the battle Renew behind Frederica is a good idea with two more SP recovery accessories so that Frederica can sustain her SP over the course of the battle and with Xenia and Eliza always switching to the front and doing their moves makes Moldo and Cyrus recover more SP over the course of the battle. But here comes the Shed Armor I talked about, but luckily I will go for the break in the next turn so that I have a few turns to recover. The Pillars of Fire has not caused combustion, but there is a chance of this move causing combustion on the enemy. Because this is the only chance I have for attacking with 2 and 3 BP, I decided to go for the Shower of Primroses now and not later on, because we're doing more damage here. Cyrus is going for the break and inflicts fire resistance down and elemental defense down and causing poison with Xenia's A4 and therefore extending the passive buff from Varkin's A4 and the poison is boosting Molus attack by 30%. But the wolf should be poisoned anyway because of Xenia's debuff. So at this state of the battle the team has its full potential but the elemental defense of this wolf is so high that even a full powered sunfall is not going to the damage cap I have built on Frederica. So this beast is so elemental defense durable. Every time that wolf comes out of the break the shield count is increased by 4. But don't you worry it will be reset as soon as you go for another attempt. It will go to 16 again but it will keep its own buffs and its weaknesses as you have lost the last attempt. So going in with a Mind Venom and 5 attacks from Eliza because of Fane's Blade reduces shields very good and gives Cyrus a bit more SP to consume for the rest of the battle. And with the Combust finally active we have one more shield to shave to go for the next break. And for this strategy to work out I have to be that fast because of the elemental down passive has to be increased with Xenia's A4 again. With Without it, I would lose 30% of elemental resistance down. Okay, I did it in 3 attempts and 51 turn. And as soon as we have 5 turns left, I only have 15% of elemental resistance down. So long story short, I don't know if 60 turns would be enough or maybe it would be a really, really close call without Xenia's A4 here. So I'm going for the espionage right now to go for her ultimate in the next turn because we have a lot of shields to shave in the next turn to still do enough of damage. So we're at 24 shields now on the wolf and the shed armor is coming on Cyrus which is not very good at the start 
start of this turn because he is shifting to the back so he can't profit from an elevating elixir which would cure that ailment. So I had to pray that in the next turn when I'm taking Cyrus to the front again that the wolf is not targeting Cyrus too often because I can't cure him. So the weaknesses have changed right now. So if I keep on doing it like this, this battle should be over in 40 turns. And, not to my surprise, the battle ended after 51 turns. So hitting a health mark here is a good way to see if your strategy is working out. So the rampage is coming and is harming Cyrus so hard and another Shad Armor would have taken Cyrus out. So I'm really glad that the last attack didn't hit him. So you see a bit of luck is also needed here to get rid of this beast. So I have talked about Rinyu coming to the front and doing the gracious prayer and I will do that in one of the next turns because when the wolf is coming out of the break he has four of his BP. Those BP deplete by two every time you break it and as soon as it reaches five BP it will strike AoE four times and this can be really disastrous for your run. So to prevent that we're taking Rinyu to the front who's doing the gracious prayer now so that we have more defense in the front and in in the next turn where the wolf should strike for that attack I just mentioned we're doing the bolstering smoke to cap the defense here and as soon as the attack will launch that the damage done hits not as hard and that was possible because the wolf doesn't have as much attack because of all our debuffs Eliza is coming to the front and heals everyone because two attacks are still coming from the wolf and Rinyu is going for the crusaders prayer now because everyone was healed and it won't make any damage difference now. So back to business, we're going to deplete a lot of uh, shields but still extending the debuffs and buffs we have on our group which is really important and I am able to shave enough shields so that the wolf has only six left and with Sarisa in the back she can do her ultimate which strikes for five shields and afterwards Cyrus can break with only one shield left. But because of the preparation for the 5 BP attack we don't have the elemental resistance down active so we're only only having the 15% from Xenia's A4 now and not the 30. So the damage done now doesn't hit as hard. We only have three turns left. So we're not able to break the wolf again. So we should go all out now on this break so that we can do the most damage possible. And even if some unit is defeated in the next turns, it won't matter because that trial is ending in two turns anyway. So we reach the yellow bar, which is really amazing which is resembling I think about 60% of health so this is good yeah and Molu got defeated here but I didn't concentrate on buffing the defenses here more so that was kind of sure that this is happening the chain spell is hitting two weaknesses of this enemy which is great so we have hit the 60% health mark now and we have another weakness change I'm going for the black death here to have 5% low elemental resistance to have one final strike with Fred Rika and Cyrus and they both come through which will be the last attacks I am able to do now. So with two weakness changes I was able to get the wolf's health to 60%. If I am able to do this another time then we have only 20% of health in the last attempt and this is exactly what happened in the next battles. So after your team got wiped out you have one more chance to recover the whole team again but as you've just heard three attacks are needed and if you take a look at your daily mails then you should have also gotten one more elite recovery potion all which is important for the third attempt so I've recovered everyone got everyone in the right position but there's one thing if the wolf gets to 40% of health he gets a speed boost and then Cyrus is too slow to act after his first attack so he can do two attacks and that could be disastrous so I could go for his fortune weapon and tweak a little bit but I decided to take away the fire resistance down and gave him the wind slicer braces. What I didn't do is giving Frederica the Dalbeck see this so that she has 10% more elemental attack up. But I will cover that in the team composition part. Okay, another 20 turns of battling this monster. And as you see here, he has a new symbol, the little blue one. And I 
think that means that his crit chance increased which is not as good. But with all the debuffs I'm doing on this wolf he will still don't do enough damage to the group which is really satisfying. So we're still doing the same procedure here with the crusaders prayer and we're just continuing what we have done in the previous phase. So in turn 18 I came across a move which is called lacerating pursuit and if one of your units has the bleeding status then this move can do lots of damage. If that unit has no bleeding it does around nothing. So taking away the bleeding status here is the key to not get too much damage from the wolf or having a bit of luck here with his wild ice blood claw not doing enough damage to your units. So instead of using the bolt stirring smoke go for the elevating elixir and take away the bleeding status of all your units so that you don't run into those problems. Apart from that you get the attack boost which is really nice so Primrose EX is really beneficial for this part of the battle. So after the break he's going for the withering ice claw which is not causing bleeding so the lacerating pursuit is not doing so much damage as in the last turn. So just take a look at your bleeding status and you should be fine in this phase of the battle. So I'm fast forwarding this because it is exactly what I have been doing in the last attempt but at turn 11 it is happening what I have been told you before that we are able to hit the 40% mark which makes that sword weakness disappear and is giving that wolf even more attack power and more speed which is resulting in the situation I have been talking about. And because I can't break with Cyrus in the next turn because he is too slow before he would use his 5 BP attack again, I got Xenia to the front and doing dark damage which the wolf is now weak to. But Eliza can't go for 5 shields so I'm just healing everyone up and going for the gracious prayer here so that we can defend against the 5 BP attack in the next turn. So the bolstering smoke is coming to buff the defenses even more and now we're seeing what the Lupin Massacre is doing now with the boosted attack and there were a lot of critical hits so you really have to defend against this monster here or else the attack would be too disastrous for your team. And with the Crusader's Prayer and the Combustion active now we have the attack plus and we have only one shield to take care of so that Cyrus is able to do the next hit and because he's faster now because of the wind slicer braces the bleeding done by the wild blood claw isn't affecting me as much. So 6 turns left and 28 shields to take care of before going into our last break of this attempt. So Xenia is helping now getting 4 shields out of the way and increasing the elemental defense down as she did before but I'm doing something which I'm not really proud of. I used the sword attacks again from Eliza. Oops yeah she did that all the time so I'll keep Xenia and Eliza in the front right now because they are A3 and have a bit more HP than Cyrus and Molu and therefore can sustain a bit more damage than the other two can. Having Eliza heal up the group before the last attack of the wolf is very recommended here and because we're only having one break left we are able to do more damage. It is okay that we can't shave as much shields as in the last turns. So another mistake here, the bolt string smoke instead of the elevating Alex here and that will cost me almost this whole run because the damage done by the lacerating pursuit is really huge but I didn't want it to restart because I only have four turns left and the damage done was really good until this point so I just went for it and had only Mo and Cyrus doing the last amount of damage here. So the last turn of attempt 2 has arrived and Rinyu helped you a bit with her magical evade skill from her ultimate so that I have still a bit of health left to do the last last strikes possible with those units in this attempt. And those strikes were enough to take the beast down to only 20% of health. So we have another weakness changed but we're still having dark and we're still having fire. So with that team composition it should be enough to still do enough damage. When I took 40% of damage in one attempt then I can take my time here. At least this is what I thought. But there's one more surprise coming. He has another attempt which is called the true lacerating pursuit and this is so strong that it takes out all of my units instantly when they're bleeding. In this whole battle he's just spamming those bleeding claws so I had to find a solution and I found it. Because I don't have to do more damage I'm concentrating now on defending more than I would on attacking so I made Rinyu a bit faster and gave her the staff of fortune which is boosting her region strength. Additionally I needed someone to guard the attack 
attacks and still boost the offense of my team. It is Sarah Noah. I just gave him two staunching charms so that he is resisting bleeding. And because Prim has a low chance of decreasing the physical attack, I decided to take Sarisa instead of Primrose. And now we're going for the last attempt and finally beating that wolf with 8 million HP. Desperate resolve right from the start and as you see now the damage done with only one attack is huge so we have to protect Serenoa instantly but apart from that I'm doing exactly the same as I have done in the last attempt. The elemental rune and the mindful venom and then I'm going to reduce even more physical attack and of course with the espionage I'm capping the debuffs and extending them over the course of the battle. And with an HP fortune sword which does only decreasing the attack of Serenoa he can tank every single target attack over the course of the whole battle. So I must admit, at this stage of the battle, having Saranoa alone is enough to carry me through the whole battle. Also he has a delaying strike which is decreasing the wolf speed by 30%. So maybe it is possible for Cyrus to equip the A4 accessory again to reduce the fire resistance down too now, which would boost the offense even more. And it is such a relief that this bleeding claws are only single target. He's not doing an AoE with that. So the true lacerating pursuit is such a joke when no one can be inflicted with bleeding. And now having Serenoa in the team, we can do a 3 BP attack now and recovering 1 BP at the end so that we can do that twice now. Couldn't do that before. So Serenoa is really the MVP for this last attempt here. Of course the damage output is not the same without Prim X here buffing everyone's attack and Rinyu doing the same. So you can see a lot of difference here damage wise but this is fine because you can see we are in the red zone and we don't have much HP left and Serenoa tanking three of those attacks consecutively is so powerful. So maybe with that strategy I'm able to do like 30% of his health maybe 25 I don't know but I'm fine with that as long as this beast is finished off for good so without Prim X boosting the ultimate gadget of the front row Serenoa is not able to do his ultimate yet again but this break is all I need with the last BP I have and I have still a few ultimates to use the eruption on level 3 still a 2 BP attack from Cyrus and I've got my sunfall left so that's about it. So three attempts used, but I used 38 to really know how to tackle this monster and turns taken 51 from 60 available. So for completing the elite tower first floor and if you do it another time you also get 1000 elite token as you got here. You get 200 rubies and those yin yang accessories. What? Additionally you can exchange those token for 20 million leaves right off the bat, 10 void dust this month which is not that great and more of those orbs and the elite training recovery box M which will give you the elite recovery potion one time and you can exchange for two which you will need for clearing that again. So having a speed around 340 guarantees that you get to attack after the 40 or 30 percent mark for a not so harming break here and Eliza should be around that speed so that she can heal every everyone if someone got really damaged and there is another attack following after Eliza was able to heal. So Xenia's A4 gives a lot of elemental attack and a bit more SP which is needed so that Cyrus has sustainable SP over the course of the battle. And as I said before, if Frederica got the Dalbuck this, then she could do even more damage when you have to equip the Wind Slicer Braces on Cyrus so that he is a bit faster than the opponent after the 30 or 30 percent mark. Kurt's A4 with the Brilliant Tactician's Medal would be also a great idea which just came to my mind right now so that you have one more turn of 30% decrease in elemental defense. Fortune weapons are really mixed so that we have physical defense and elemental defense reduced. Frederico Star Tom was also very amazing here. In the third attempt I used the Sword of Fortune to boost Eliza's healing capability but in the first two phases I used the Fane's Beloved Blade to hit one more time. 
you had two weapons, one which is also boosting the elemental attack so that she heals better with her region, but in the first two phases she had one which is granting more HP and that she acts a bit slower. So let's don't forget the ninth member, Primrose here, whom I had to push the HP a bit more because she's lacking that really much, but her elemental attack was enough here so that the region was strong enough. So let's take a look at those great white wolves crest yin and yang which if both are used give 80 physical attack and you also get the sp recovery of 40 sp per turn which is amazing and with a normal attack you have the 50 percent chance that the bleeding status is inflicted on the opponent so right now i don't know exactly where to use both of them but the sp recovery is a really great thing here which i keep in mind for later battles and before you closing the video i have to tell you one more thing this channel just classed up to three stars with 5,000 subscribers and therefore I have a present for all of you guys. I announced my very first class up special which will be held live Monday 8 p.m. UTC and 1 p.m. PT so be sure to check it out to know what I'm working on secretly. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you didn't already and give thumbs up to this video if you liked what you've seen. See you Monday, you're free to play.